You are listening to part 16b of the podcast series, 21 Qualities of a Leader. Number four, I think leaders should go first in being an example. If you really want to go first as a leader, I say go ahead. And one of the areas you should go first in is literally leading your team by example. People follow the leader. And number five, I think leaders should go first in giving others the credit. I think you ought to go first in looking around and saying, I want you to know that where we are and what's happening to us and, 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 and the success of this organization, this department, this company, I want you to know I want to give you credit for. So th there are five areas that a leader should go first in. Go, go at it. I mean, get right to the front of the line. Go first in taking responsibility, mending relationships, serving others, being an example, and giving other people the credit. What I've discovered is this. Overpromise and underdeliver, and the leader loses respect. If you're a leader that just overpromises but underdelivers, you very quickly lose respect with people. But if you underpromise and overdeliver, then as a leader you'll gain trust. And leaders go the extra mile, and leaders take the high road. Recently, my book, The 21 Irrefutable Laws of Leadership, passed the million seller mark, and we had a wonderful banquet put on by Thomas Nelson, uh, my publisher, and we were in Orlando at the Booksellers Convention, the National Booksellers Convention, and, and about 120 people were in the room, the publishing people, just to spend an evening having a wonderful meal together, and just an evening where there were a lot of nice things said about uh, the book, and a lot of awards passed out, etc. But finally they gave me 30 minutes to, to talk. And when I got up, I looked in that room, and every person in that room, every person in that room, had added to the success of that book. In other words, it wasn't me writing a book that had sold a million copies. It was a team effort. And I began to go around the room and just call them one by one, and I began to thank them. I began to thank them for, for what they had done for me and how they had helped me. And I began to specifically talk about the contribution they had made on that book. Boy, it was a warm evening. By the time I was done, there were, everybody had tears in their eyes, and, and uh, it was you know, just a kind of eating, you end up just hugging your people, and Margaret and I went back to, the, to our motel room, and, and she said, John, she said, let me ask you a question. She said, what was the highlight of the evening for you? And, and I thought, well, you know, I thought the highlight would be, uh, you know, the, the recognition or the awards. I said, by far, the, by far, by far the highlight was when I got up and was able to spend 35 minutes thanking the people on my team for literally making this book what it was. Now, listen to me very carefully, because this is huge. I think in the area of responsibility and this whole process, be sure to give your team around you credit. Be sure to let them know that it's because of them that you're successful. Let, let's, let's just put it this way. If you see a turtle on top of a fence post, he didn't get there by himself. <laughs> let me give you another characteristic of a leader that embraces responsibility. They are committed to excellence. I discovered that stress comes from doing less than you can. Jim Rohn, you're exactly right. L let me just talk to you about commitment to excellence for a second. The levels of the bar of expectation and excellence, from the lowest to the highest, go down to the bottom for a moment. I'm talking about setting the bar of excellence for yourself. The lowest level is I don't set it for myself. Wow, that's terrible. Maybe the next step up is no one sets it for me. And above that, someone sets it for me. But the highest is I set it for myself. Let me tell you something. When someone else sets the bar of expectation and excellence for you, you're already in trouble. Set it higher than anyone else. And number four, they produce regardless of the situation. People that handle responsibility, they produce regardless of the situation. The ultimate quality of a responsible person is the ability to finish. In An Open Road, Richard L. Evans writes, it is priceless to find a person who will take responsibility, who will finish and follow through to the final detail to know when someone has accepted an assignment that it will be effectively, conscientiously completed. 